Welcome everyone to episode five of the Symphony Gear podcast, the only podcast where we talk about Symphony Gear and all the other random ideas that pop into our heads. I am joined tonight by the lovely and talented Sea Tactics, a man who once won a burrito eating contest without even knowing he earned it. Wait, I, I did? Apparently he doesn't know that he even won it. <laughs> well, well the, the most burritos I've had in, in a day is like two. And that was from Taco Bell. I don't want Taco Bell. All right, I know what I'm doing after this podcast. But first, this episode of Sympho Gear. Sympho Gear, episode five. The hidden thing in the bag. Great episode title. Very descriptive of what the events are about to be. Um, the girls relieve some stress by hanging out with each other. But a fight breaks out between Miku and Hibiki. Oh, no. Over Subasa. Oh, no. But the noise attack... And now they're they, they gotta go fight them. Um, Science Lolly and Miku Lolly get separated. Miku Lolly, what the fuck did I just say? <laughs> Science Lolly and Miku get separated and and then uh, cornered by Milark and a government stooge. And somebody, some freaking There's blood. Blood. That's no one died. Let's be honest. No one died. Yeah, I, I feel like they were making us think that someone died, but this is a Symphokir, and they would not kill a character that way, so... But would they kill Lock Hill? I mean, Kill or Kill did not have much character death until the final episode. This is true. I mean, what... What... What human, when Sly sh- shoots out that much blood? Um, the president of Japan. Oh, god damn it, I knew it! Yes, and speaking of the Japanese government, well, they were doing things. At the start of the episode, they basically ordered Song to stop fighting and to retreat, and they were kind of taking control of it. And since we know that uh, Fudo is behind them doing that, so I was like, like, what exactly is he after? And I think we got some hints this episode, but we, a lot of questions still. They uh, So um, uh, the director guy's brother, he was talking to him in the very middle of this episode in a very long conversation <laughs> let me yes, tell you long and it feels like there's like lots of information there and uh something i thought interesting is that the commander guy was using an old lady's phone randomly i was like is she someone that we should know is she important i probably should look that up before the podcast but i got distracted by things i guarantee you he was just like can i could i use your phone and she was like konnichiwa neko-san she was like oh it's toru it, this is an uh, old lady Toru. <laughs> oh, that's that's even more adorable than normal Toru. <laughs> yes, uh, go check out Fruits Basket if you have not done so. It's like Simple Gear, except completely opposite, except for how good it is. It's, it's like nothing like Simple Gear. <laughs> <laughs> but they're both awesome shows. This is true. This is true. They're both really fun. Um, yes. We got a lot of interesting parts with Tsubasa this episode. Like right. at the start, uh, she was saying that they should cooperate with the Japanese. And then we had uh, Kiriko who was saying like, oh, yes, I agree. And they showed, wait, what a second, wait a second, what did you say? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Death Lolly uh, did not understand what was going on. And then Shirabe was like, you don't understand what's going on. Maybe we should leave yeah, this up to the adults. This like, is complicated. I- don't worry about this. <laughs> If that is the issue, they are literally Sympho Gears as children. To your point? They're children! <laughs> yes, they're, but they have their Sympho Gears and they want to save the world and they want to yell death. But children shouldn't be doing these things. Though I am a bit disappointed. I was hoping at some point this episode we had a Kirika yell death at the government people, but that didn't happen. <laughs> That may be next episode, actually. Um, I, I just imagine the reaction like, that. why is this? Or if I was just like a normal government person and a teenager was just yelling death at me, I'm like, why are you doing that? <laughs> hey, hey, kid, what are you? Why, why are you yelling death at me? Also, why do you have a scythe? Why are you dressed <laughs> like that? Yeah, I'd probably be more concerned about the scythe than the yelling death, but that too. This is true. Those, those dang lollies, they don't have a reach normally, but with a scythe, they sure do have a reach. Exactly. I cannot run most lollies, but not with, not if they have a scythe. This is true. Well, I mean, there's there's probably an easy way to counter it if you get attacked by a lolly with a scythe. All you gotta do is just block and parry um, the scythe, and then I was gonna say like just throw barbecue sauce at them to distract them. Yep. I mean, that would also help. 
<laughs> this the show's weird. Uh, but yes, I think we our got conversations to... are more weird. <laughs> I blame Simple Gear. I blame the Simple Gear podcast. Yes, and speaking of the Simple Gear podcast, uh, we learned a bit, or something interesting is that the government people were telling Hibiki she can no longer use that new power because it wasn't approved in the like form they saw and filled out for what they can do on Japan. And I just found that really humorous and making a strange amount of sense. Okay, go on. <laughs> because I was like, like you need some way to like limit the characters using their ultimate power. It's like, okay, so they... She can use it, but she's legally not allowed to in Japan. And I was like, that's just like comes out of nowhere. It's like, although with the way government works, I could see that being quite logical. Okay, okay. So, so yes, it it makes uh, just enough sense to make sense for a government. I the I was to me. Uh... Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and then Hibiki was saying like uh, it's not a weapon but the courage to unclench a fist and it's like Hibiki I think you're onto something but I don't know if that fits but it's simple gear so we'll, we'll go with it a weapon is still a weapon no <laughs> this is this gun isn't a gun it's a way to unclench <laughs> my fist exactly this isn't a weapon it's friendship <laughs> it's a way to bring friends together yes or to blow up the moon or oh, yeah. we'll get to that next episode maybe <laughs> Well, yeah. Well, the the director's brother mentioned the moon at one point, um, and yeah, also like, well, he's gonna like try and like make the relationship between the the U.S. better. Yeah, it's like well, earlier this season we saw that the U.S. and Japan were working together to go to the moon, and then we heard them saying that they wanted to explore the relics there. And I don't think we heard about the relics beforehand, so that's like the true motivation for the moon mission thing. And you know what? It makes sense that we don't know about relics being on the moon until now, because. When has the moon ever been that important? Exactly. They just kind of blew it up once. Yeah. The, the, the last time somebody used the moon in any kind of form of context, it was when Fine wanted to make the moon and the earth collide. Yeah. And then the season two, they're trying to put the moon back into orbit where it should be. Yes. And then it's just been floating there with a giant hole in it. Right. Normal stuff. I mean, for anime, it happens before. Uh, we learned that um, Vanessa, the, the other murder lollies, they they uh, are not human because they were all experimented on in different ways. Vanessa yeah. is like an android, right? Like she was uh, a due to the accident. She was like it had the false strobes be like part of her body to make her a cyborg. Yeah, and yeah, this is what's on screen right now. Yep, which is. Which is really, um, which is, I, I guess, like, um, the whole, like, backstory on them, once again, they were like, please care about these characters, but literally, even in this episode, even in this one, they, they were like, I'm, don't, I'm not gonna apologize for what I'm about to do to you. Oh, mm -hmm. well, yeah, she did that last episode, too, and that seems to be, like, a thing she does before she kills someone, or at least tries to. Yeah, she gets all those crazy eyes. It's like that eagle song. And then there's Which blood everywhere. Yeah, we also had a Fudo who was giving them a place to uh, live because, like, because his group is in charge of the re uh, reconstruction of Japan, it's like he could set the place aside for them. Mm -hmm. And then we also saw like what they're doing is like he's giving them blood that they need to live in exchange for them helping him. But he doesn't seem so friendly. He seems very antagonistic. <laughs> right. And like I have a feeling that could easily like fall apart if they had any other options. So, yeah, I, I feel like he's he's more of like trying to manipulate them than anything else. That, maybe he wants them to betray him or try to. That's all part of his plan. Yeah, I you know in the beginning of this episode we got a continuation of what happened at the very ending of the, the last episode where where Hibiki was like friendship, and then um, they were like. They, they didn't say no. <laughs> they just uh, left. Wait, hold on. Sorry, things are making noise. Oh, no. Not noise. Maybe oh, just Hibiki. fade. Maybe it's Hibiki. fade, nothing important. But if it's the noise, maybe Hibiki can come and punch it. All right, I should have Hibiki punch all the noise. Yay! Which, 
She kind of did later on in the episode and before Subasa set everything on fire, but we'll get to that part soon. Set all the snowmen on fire? She they definitely focused on the snowman. There's a reason for that. Well, yeah, it's because those snowmen didn't deserve whatever happened to them. Yes, but before we get to that, uh, there's a part with the commander's brother who made the comment saying that he wanted to believe in people uh, until the end. And uh, this reminds me of Tover from Fruits Basket, which, of course, we're going to bring up because that's what we do. Right, right. But it's like, the, in this case, though, he would be right to doubt, and I'm wondering if how long it's taking for him to like go go to his doubts if that will cause bad stuff to happen. Uh, maybe. Um, he definitely seems like someone who's, um, we haven't seen him a lot in the show, I don't think, right? No, we saw him a little bit earlier on this season. Like, he's, like, handling, like, the political engagement with the United States. So, yeah, he seems like someone who, uh, has experience with people, so maybe he has some way that he can get what he wants out of someone. Yeah, it sounds like he de- like when he was new- talking about his negotiations with America, he definitely has power and is not afraid to use it, but he seems to be very optimistic, maybe even idealistic, which kind of fits the whole theme of the show. But they're also taking a little bit of a darker uh, bent on it this season, so I'm wondering if we'll start to see like how his plan will end up falling apart because of that. Instead of holding hands, we're gonna... What's more violent than holding hands? We're gonna hold... No, we're hands. gonna uh, head pats. Head pats, furious head pats. Exactly, head pats are more violent than uh, hand holding. Exactly. <laughs> Speaking of hand holding, we got something almost as equally as lewd as hand holding. Miku and and Hibiki took a bath together. <laughs> exactly. Once which is again, not a fan service as it could have been, which I was glad for. I mean, there was some, there was some side boob. There was, but it was like the focus was not on the fan service. It was like them being cute together. So, and then at one point, Mukio has water guns, and she's like, "I'm just trying to imitate Chris." I'm like, "God damn it! Why is this show so self-aware?" <laughs> exactly, but she didn't see a uh, 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 bang, so she wasn't quite as good. Yeah, she didn't pull the water guns out of her boobs. <laughs> that would be weird. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised that didn't happen. <laughs> It's very weird, actually. Um, uh, yeah, uh, so th- another scene where I guess we're just... It's very obvious that these two are, uh, you know, together. Right. Um, yeah, it just shows that... It shows, like, Hibiki wanting to rest to spend time with Miku and her friends, but at the same time still being stressed out over the mission and, like, knowing that something is wrong. Which is... Which is, once again, this episode has, you know, Hibiki and Miku getting into a little bit of an argument over Sabasa, And right. that, that hammers on the point of, you know, how, how they fight is through separation. Separating people and, and you know. Oh, yeah, uh, definitely. And so th- this is another example of that. How they're not, they're, none of them are really on the same page. I mean, we have... Uh, Hibiki and Miku getting into an argument which ha- when has that ever happened yeah never like this I don't think and they like yelled at each other too like it wasn't like and Miku started it really right and it's interesting how their argument is about their friend Subasa. so it's like the villains are using their friendship to drive them apart and when friendship is such a big theme of the show Su- Subasa is going to be Majin Subasa by the end of this I mean, she kind of was this... Had she ever used fire like that before? I don't think so. I think the last time was when she split that ship in half. In season yeah, four. but she normally doesn't like use fire as a weapon, though. She just, like, slices stuff in half. Oh, At least yeah. I think. I don't, I don't... Maybe this was just a new move. I don't know. Yes. Well, like, her transformation had fire... Like, everything she was doing had, like, fire around her. Yeah, she had the whole... I don't the room she was in when she transformed. I don't know the the the, the realm she went into uh, had fire shooting up out the floor. Right, and I noticed too when they had like the system clear thing on their simple gears. There's like another message on Tsubasa's which seemed which I don't remember seeing in the other. So I don't know if that was important. Yeah, but I yeah. just thought about that now. So that Actually, could be something. When I saw that, I was like, oh, like her her like thing is on the, her foot or whatever but no it's yeah it's, it's not it's, it's just a different message entirely 
Yeah, so, like, what's going on? Like, I probably should have actually written that down, but I just thought about that now, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's very obvious that something is happening with Tsubasa. I, at this point, I don't think it's going to be as cool as I originally thought it was going to be, of where Tsubasa is going to betray everybody. I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, it's not going to be like that, but you can tell, like, she let her hate get control of her, and whatever they did, they were able to make... Uh, the, her view the noise as that uh, bad guy whose name I forgot. Did I write that down? I don't know. No, I don't. I, yeah, I can't remember right now either. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, Millark was that it? Uh, yeah, Millark. Yeah. Yeah. How like she was able to make all the noise look at her, and that made the boss like throw her strongest attack at it, causing a lot of collateral damage. Well, I don't know if you saw this, but there was a scene or uh, some frames of Subasa's eyes still having the seal invasion thing in her pupils. Oh, yeah, I did not catch that. So, yeah, that's definitely the seal invasion is what was causing that. Yeah, as soon as she saw Milark, there was, like, there was, like, a zoom in to her face as she was getting ready to, like, uh, slash at some noise. And you see her pupils are, like, like, uh, like, they have that seal invasion art or whatever. Okay. So, yeah, that's what it was then. Yep. And it shows like they're it shows like this is another step in their plan. Like, especially since we know that the government was the ones controlling the Sefo Gears and they were also the ones controlling the uh Milark in them. So they obviously plan the attack to happen like this. Which means they control the noise. Exactly. So they control the noise, they had control of the Sefo Gears. So they basically are controlling everything and they made this fight happen specifically for I think it was this purpose to make Subasa lose control like that. Maybe what they want to do is make Subasa loyal because we've we've already started seeing it, like you mentioned earlier, where Subasa's saying all the time, just you know, give up, let the let the government take over. Oh yeah, and there's another second time in the episode too, where she's saying, "I'm okay with doing this," while the other ones weren't. Yeah, it's very it's it is it's it's obvious that there's a, a besides you know what happened with Milar, it's obvious there is there was already an eternal conflict within Tsubasa from the past season where her family has has a big role in her life and um she yeah, she's, she's trying like, to balance to make her family those. proud yeah she's trying to balance those with with you know song as well as her family great and uh, there's another there is a line uh with when they got to karaoke that Tsubasa is saying something like uh, these songs don't make me happy like they should. And I think that was a very um, intentional phrasing. Right. Yeah. Um, it's... Yeah, she's saying, she's saying she should not be enjoying songs but practicing her skills as a protector, showing that she's, like, turning away from music as her weapon. Right, right. It's Right, right now, um, for her, it's she's turning away all of that for strength and power. Right. And it's kind of the opposite of Hibiki, who is like using her power and her music to connect with others, while Tsubasa is strengthening her weapon to attack others. Yeah, uh, that's it's a very interesting um, story they're trying to tell with Tsubasa because it's for how many seasons have all these characters, you know, they've believed in their music, and now suddenly Tsubasa doesn't, and that's like a big thing because it's such an integral part of Symfo Gear. Especially like Tsubasa was the original idol at the first concert. Exactly, exactly. She's soul survivor. Yeah, well, going back to that point too, we also saw that Miku has been blaming herself for all the danger Hibiki's in because Miku is the one who invited Hibiki to that concert. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, so, so that, there's definitely a lot of this tying back to the beginning, back to season one here, which I think is really interesting. Yeah, there's... A lot, like like a lot of this season so far has been like, remember season one? Right, and like the small things there are like how the impact they have four seasons later. Yeah, exactly, exactly. The the one thing that would complete this is Fine came back. And that would not even surprise me. I know it would be like Deus Ex Machina and it would be kind of annoying, but still, it, it would be a, a total like, you know, a, a full circle at that point. Yeah, and with Sifo Gear, I don't think I'd even complain if that happened. Yeah, Sifo Gear. I don't think Sifo Gear can jump the shark. It's already had. It's like it jumps the star- shark so hard it's in orbit and it's been studying there since season three. <laughs> I 
I think, I think honestly, I think the only way for them to like jump the shark is to do like time travel and stuff. That would be fine. They should do it. <laughs> I don't know how I'd feel about that. Actually, I don't. It would make absolutely no sense whatsoever. So they should do it. I love Simple Gear. I like your reasoning. Do it because we can. <laughs> Do it because it makes no sense, because this is Simple Gear, and if you're gonna have the final season, you might as well go all out and do everything. Yep. Um So they're like chilling out at one point in this episode and they ask the Silas Lolly, what what does she do to help relieve her stress? And she's like, I work more. I was like, Yes, I like focus on my brain to like de stress. Like, okay, you need to be with someone who makes you have fun. And they were all staring at TV key. <laughs> Of course, they'd all stare at Hibiki. I'll say, okay, what's the person you can be with and they will make sure you have fun? Hmm, let's, let's see. Let's look at who this person is. <laughs> I do like Hibiki's reaction when she picked up. Oh, me, okay. <laughs> and then the, yeah. she starts singing it. She's singing karaoke in this episode and she is like having a blast. Like, this is the <laughs> first time she's thrown character ever. Exactly. So it's like you need to sing karaoke, you need to have fun. And I think I remember the lyrics being like they seem to be like hinting at something, but I forgot what that was now. I wasn't paying attention to the lyrics, but I knew immediately they were foreshadowing. I was like, I don't need to watch these. I I know this is foreshadowing. Well we also got something else interesting too, is like Subasa's lyrics, how they were like the I'm going to save and protect everyone, but there still seemed to be like a hint of like failure trying to overcome, trying to make up for past wrongs in there. Right, yeah. It's hard to concentrate on the lyrics and the battle at the same time. Especially, That's why I like watching these things twice. Especially that fight. Oh, Catherine's here. Yes. Hello, Catherine. Thank you for joining us uh, for us to talk about things that make no sense. <laughs> so the scene where Zabasa um, un- uh, is fights Melark, or thinks she's fighting Melark, the, the, but the, the noise that yes. for, to her looks like Melark, and she uses that giant double-sided blade that oh yeah was the transformation leading into that beautiful yeah something else interesting about this episode is that it's i think the only one this season that's only had one fight wow really yeah and we kind of only got one song unless you count uh, the uh robot alchemist one uh, singing karaoke Wait, is she a I robot? The names. I thought so. Yeah, because uh, Carol was a robot. Was it Carol? Carol and Tuesday? Uh, I mean, that's also a music anime. <laughs> Shinichiro Watanabe should direct some gear. I don't think he'd be as good as Michael Bay. <laughs> This is true. <laughs> like, as much as I respect Watanabe, he's no Michael Bay when it comes to Simpho Gear. <laughs> uh, what were we talking yeah. about? Uh, the Alchemist uh, Lolly on the Good Guys team. Oh, yeah. Uh, Elf Nine, I think, was her name. Well, no, her name's Science Lolly. Okay, Science Lolly, we're going with that. Catherine says, hmm, how many people did she kill in her rampage? I don't think any. Well, they didn't really see it, but they were seeing that they were evacuating. But the question is, um, how many people like would, did not have time to evacuate before Subasa like went on a rampage and set all the snowmen on fire? Well, she killed lots of snowmen. Yeah, which that's also something interesting. Like, why were they focusing on the snowmen so much? Is there a deeper meaning, or is that just them being symphogenic and deciding we're going to show this because we can? I think that was just them. Like, let's just do this because just because and also the the buildings in the city just didn't look they look like like they were run down the whole city did well i look i think that's because like subasa charred them with her fire it's like she didn't completely destroy them but she like burnt them some huh maybe oh yeah no yeah you're right yeah in the snowman, I'm wondering if they're like showing snowman as like this is a symbol of a innocent winter fun activity. So like Subasa's melting them, she's like showing the destruction of innocence and friendship and all that maybe, or maybe I'm just thinking about this too much. I, I mean I, uh, uh I don't know. I don't know at all. Uh, but 
and th- I, that wouldn't be surprised me if that's what it was. Yeah, so I, there's so many things they could have shown, but to show that they had to have a reason for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see what else. Uh, yeah, so we had uh, Malark, who was the order to get to Elf Nine, who was the uh, science folly. Yeah. And so that was, the question is like, why? And at first, I was thinking, you know, maybe she's after Mika because Mika could use the relic, but they don't care about Mika, so that's obviously not it. I bet Miku. They're gonna use Miku at some point in this, because Miku has to do something in this uh, season. Right. I, she could use this info gears. She, she was like a villain and like kind of a villain in one yeah. like season two, and right. And at the end of season four, the very last scene of the last episode of that season, it's like, it like did a whole thing about Miku. Yeah, so I have a feeling Miku will be the one to use the relic eventually, but there's a lot of questions of what will lead to that point. Right, exactly. Um, so yeah, they, they want they want her, and Miku's like, no, uh no. Yeah, so well, let's talk about the cliffhanger at the end then, when the uh, Elfine found El- or the enemy found Elfine and Miku, and like was going after Elfnane. They said, we don't care what happens to Miku, so then she attacked. And they seemed to try to be applied that she killed Miku, which we don't think is what happened. But, like, what exactly did there? There's nothing that shoots out blood like that. There just isn't. I don't... Who... Maybe there was just, like, a noise there. Yeah, or, like, it's implied, like, something, something like, stopped their attack, and it's something special that has lots of blood, so maybe that? Or... Snowman that came back to for revenge. That's okay, I might be onto something here. But something that has lots of blood is that suitcase they had with her. So what if someone had that suitcase and then blocked the attack with that? What? But the only other person who could do that would be the other uh, enemy. So what if that's what happened? And that's why the blood was shooting out so much. But what has the same? What has that blood? Like those those blood bags don't have that much blood pressure in them. Oh, they might. You don't know. And especially if they're being stabbed like that. Unless they have, like, or a wait. tank of blood. What if it wasn't uh, blood, but ketchup? <gasps> the Marilollies! Do... Yeah, because we didn't see the other Simple Gear users. They seemed to be implied to be far away, but what if, when they heard about that, they started uh, to rush back to that place. And uh, because the Death Lolly can fly in our sights, she might have been the first one to get there. Exactly. Yeah, I think Chris Chris's missiles would probably be quicker, but maybe Chris wasn't with him. <laughs> and can, can Chris ride on her own missiles? She pulls. She's she surfed on them. Yes, yeah, so I guess that's a yes then. The show makes no sense. Uh, Jermaine said, "I think she killed the guy behind her or Miku. They had a pack of had a pack of gushers." <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. Yeah, and that guy too, like he seemed to be like a random character, but then he was making the comment saying, No, this is, I'm excited, this is something they can't show on TV anymore. Oh <laughs> that was like what that was so weird. He was like getting turned on by like ooh, ew. Yeah, I mean it's weird enough to be getting turned by lollies, but getting turned on by killing lollies? That's just creepy. I mean, we've sacrificed those to the volcano gods. Exactly, but not the good lollies. Yeah, not are there good lollies? Yes, the murder lollies. But those are murder lollies. Uh, there's also Kisa. Oh, yeah, we don't sacrifice Kisa. Oh, yeah, Hibiki has a booster, so she could fly too, but I wonder if she could get to where Miku and them were, since she's probably worried about Tsubasa. Uh, Sub- Tsubasa also has, has them as well. She used them in this episode. Yeah, but Tsubasa is like, going crazy and stuff. And uh, something else, though, is that... Uh, um, Keep on forgetting the villain's name, but she was taking out the security camera so people could not see what was going on. This is true. It was like, who would be using the security cameras, though? The Japanese government? Which, oh, that, so maybe she's trying to hide what she was doing from the government who she's supposed to be helping. Okay, here's my theory. Okay. Subasa, straight up murdered Milark. That would Be- actually make sense. Showed up and sliced her directly in half. That's a Subasa thing to do. 
and is like, ha ha ha, I got my revenge. Ha 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 ha, you're dead, you're dead. And then, the, the, the reason why Subasa knew is because the, when the security camera broke, they informed they informed all the Sinfo gears like, hey, the security camera broke over there, and that's where last Miku and and uh, and and Science Lolly were headed. So Subas is like, I will I will take this upon myself because you never know. And then there, Subasa finds Milark doing weird things, and then Subasa is like, haha, slice 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 and dice, and slices her directly in half. Blood squirts out of her severed half. And then Subasa turns into Majin Subasa. There's Babri. Babri's like, yes, I will turn Subasa into. Yeah. And then all that happens. And then Majin Subasa versus Goku, aka Hibiki. I was gonna say like, he, and then Hibiki goes Super Saiyan to fight her. There you go. Book Wait. It. So now that. Now that uh, Song is back in charge of themselves again, does that mean Tbiki's now allowed to use any superpower? They're, it's, or they, or it's, is it still not approved by the Japanese government so she can't yet? I'm not sure. Yeah, the, I would have a real... feeling if push comes to shove, Hibiki's going to use it anyways. Yeah, I mean, the law won't stop Hibiki from uh, doing friendship. Exactly. Doing That's friendship a is 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 it not maybe not the exact phrasing you wanted to say, but I understood what you meant. <laughs> exactly, you understand what I mean. The viewers understand what I mean, even when I don't understand what I mean. We just need we need an epic show off. Sabasa, Majin Sabasa, versus Goku, aka Hibiki. And then Hibiki resolves it by holding out her hand. And then punches Sabasa. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so she punches Subasa to say never be traced again, and then holds her hand, and it's like because you're always our friend. It's like say who- it's like Dark Saber, you know. It's the same thing. She gets swallowed into the Holy Grail, and Saber is like Nani, and then it's the same thing. Subasa is like Nani, and then so so fakely podcast in three. Oh God! <laughs> and and see, there you go. There you go. Evil Subasa. It's so easy. Do it. And just have Subasi just, so Subasi? Subasa just 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 destroy all the other Sinfo gears and Hibiki's, you know, is in like the 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 chamber thing and like the ship like healing from her wounds, right? It's like the it's like the Frieza arc or whatever. And the Frieza saga. Did they call them sagas? I think they did. They called them sagas. And then like I don't know. they're like, you know, She's like training in the hyperbolic time chamber and she comes out and she's just oh, there you go. There you go. Do it. Uh I just I just Vanessa told Marlark to take Mika because she and Hibiki can use divine Yeah, so maybe that's what it was. Or yeah, I think Catherine might be onto something. What if uh Mylark killed the government person because uh, Vanessa told her, like, take uh, Miku because she has a lot of power we can use. They can use that against the government. So uh, Milar killed the government person so that they don't know what's going on. Then she took both Himiki and Elfine back to Vanessa. I think Catherine's idea makes sense. So Subas is not going to turn evil and fight Hibiki in an epic fight? Uh, yeah, I just completely forgot what you said about that one. That's all I want. <laughs> oh, I hope we get that too. That would be that would be cool. I just want evil Sabasa brainwashed. Wait, like... what if we, what if we get both evil Sabasa and evil Miku? Well, I mean, if Miku turns evil, she's gonna be fighting for good. See, <gasps> no. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Even better. Think about this. Miku okay. uses the Sinfo gears as a last resort. Cut my life into pieces, and then. And <laughs> that took me too long to get what you were doing. <laughs> and I, she, I almost had desks. It's it's like a last resort. Hibiki's like you know down and out of action, and Miku's like fine, I will take it upon myself. And then Subasa just like points a, like her sword at her, and then shoots a beam. And then Miku's like, and then it's Hibiki. like in her heart where she had the thing. And, but no, no, no. Here we go. Okay. Miku's like, Hibiki, my shining star! And then literally explodes. And then Hibiki's like... Into a shining star. In, 
I, I was gonna say well into pieces but uh and then, <laughs> don't worry they'll use the dragon balls afterwards and then after that hibiki powers up to the legendary sympho gear no, it was like she uses a fusion of all the powers again so she can like use her ultimate attack thing again. There you go. There you go. And she has a friendship from the alchemist from last season too. Sympho Gear God Sympho Gear. That's what we'll call it. That that makes enough sense for Sympho Gear. <laughs> Didn't make sense for Dragon Ball Z either. <laughs> I, no, I was gonna say it makes sense for Sympho uh, it makes about as sense as the rest of Sympho Gear. So yeah, um I've gotten through all my notes. Uh, anything else or overall thoughts on the episode? Nope. Pretty much nothing else. Oh, they were going to use the bracelet, the power of the gods, and turn it into a sword, I think. I don't know what they were going to use that for, but they were definitely going to use something. And that's why I think Catherine is right about, like, uh, they're taking Miku to use it. Well, if, the, if it's going to be a sword, it's got to be Subasa that's got to use it, because Subasa uses swords. Ooh, that could be interesting. Especially I mean, with everything else with Subasa. I guess Mario uses, like, a blade, but, you know, it's hers is, like... She- she uses, it's, it's not a sword, yeah, even though it is. That's that's the chain that wraps around her boobs. <laughs> it's something like that. All right. So, um, overall thoughts on the episode? Uh, probably the weakest episode so far. I think. Yeah, I would agree. It feels like there's a lot of stuff going on, but not much of real excitement. Right. Right. Um, I wasn't even like. I mean, so the best part of this episode was the Subasa thing. I think. I think even the best part was just Subasa's transformation. I don't even think the actual thing where she goes like crazy and, and throws a giant double bladed sword. That so. was kind of cool, but not to the level of Simpho gear normally. Yeah, it, it's okay. I mean, it was good. It was a good episode, but you know, I think it was the weakest. Yeah, it's like every other episode this season has been awesome. So when you have just episode, I agree it's weaker than the others. Yeah. But hopefully this is like set up so it can build up to be even more crazy next episode. Yeah. Yeah, um, Catherine liked it. Yeah, also, I'm glad. Also, Jermaine yeah, says Hibiki used the sword in season one. I don't remember that. Oh, I think I probably vaguely remember that. Did she? Hibiki used the yeah, it was like a year ago that we watched it. Yeah. Wow, that was like a year ago. I don't know. When did we start watching Sifu Gear? It was last year, sometime. That's so weird. I feel like I've just always watched Sifu Gear. <laughs> Yes, yeah, all because of one I was thinking this was a fun show I saw an episode of. Let's watch it together. <laughs> and now here we are. Here we are with the Symphony Gear podcast. The most popular Symphony podcast on YouTube that I know of. I I remember you were like, yeah, let's 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 watch Symphony Gear, and I was like, Symphony Gear, what the heck is that? I mean, this doesn't this doesn't look good, like at all. I don't want to watch this, but I was like, whatever, I'll, I'll watch it. I don't care. I'm bored. <laughs> Uh, yeah. and, and I was like, okay, this is awesome. <laughs> right. Exactly. Sometimes these weird anime suggest they're like awesome. Other times that I just, I just remember the first, the, the Hibiki getting hit, hit by that piece of Sympho gear. And I was like, there you go. That's it. I'm watching the rest of it. <laughs> okay. Apparently he used a sword to beat the Fine at some point. It's true. I believe that, but I kind of forgot that I should go rewatch that battle. No, no, no regrets. Not even one letter. Exactly. You don't even need all the letters for regrets. <laughs> uh, Where's that shoulder? I, I don't know. I don't have anything more to say. Ah, uh, neither do I. Uh, see, tell people where they can find you. Uh, I have a channel called C Tattoos. You can find me there. I also have a second channel called Bento, where me and this guy, Rising Sun Reviews, talk about Symphogear Gear every Friday. And, and but that's during the Fruits Basket podcast. Oh yeah, that's this Fruits Basket podcast. Sorry, uh, and then, but we do talk about Netflix here most weeks. Yes, this is true. And every Saturday on the Bento channel as well, I uh, air live the King of Anime podcast, which the vods go up later on the the next day or the same night on the main channel. And um, they also talk about Simpho Gear, I assume. Uh, I, no, they do not like Simpho Gear. There's things um, they will not let me talk about. They won't let me talk about fate. They won't let me talk about Sympho Gear. Okay, uh, one second. Uh, let's see. At King of Anime Podcast, let me talk about Sympho Gear. What? There you go. I might have spelled some things wrong, but that's okay. Um, 
I have I do I do like also normal reviews as well. I'm just the, I'm a generic anime YouTuber. Exactly, like almost as generic as me, except I make videos about Magical Girl sometimes. I strive, I strive to be better than Chibi reviews. That's my goal. And I strive to have more than one video out per week, but that doesn't happen. <laughs> I strive to be just as good as Rising. Uh, I don't know what I strive to be. I strive to uh, confuse C tactics things that I give him. Now I'm confused. It works. Exactly. So thank you for watching, everyone. Uh, please, uh, we will be. Uh, please subscribe if you are interested in watching more Symphonic Gear videos or whatever other videos I come out with. And we will be back next week around the same time to talk about more Symphonic Gear things or whatever other ideas we come up with on the spot, because we are a very professional podcast. Okie dokie. Goodbye.